So Winston Churchill says, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. So whether we consider ourselves pessimistic or optimistic, we go back to what Karen read this morning in Think and Grow Rich. What if you started every single day before you got out of bed, the minute you opened your eyes and you said, I love my life and today is going to be fabulous. Now, how many of you went right to, yeah, but my life's not really fabulous. Why would I do that? You don't understand. I lost my job. You know, you don't understand. My dog died. You don't understand. We always seem to go to that place of you don't understand. And here's the thing. Yes, we do. Because have we not all been there? Every single one of us has a story we could get up here and share about the woe is me of life. Because life happens to every single one of us. Every single one of us. And so in being positive, how do we become positive? Well, the first one is it's a choice. If you want to be positive, then you have to decide, I'm going to be positive. So I can see the brains turning, the little, oh yeah, no, it's not that simple. Yeah, it is. And I'm not saying life isn't going to happen. Life is going to happen to each and every single one of us sitting in this room. Everybody out there, regardless of where they are, life is going to happen to them and to us because life doesn't quit happening. Life happens. And then here's the choice. What story am I going to put on what just happened? Am I going to make it the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life? And then I'm going to continue to share and tell that story with anybody that will listen? Or am I going to work through whatever happened? Because let's say it was not the best experience work through that, figure out what the opportunity was from that happening, and then share that with people. Because I've had a, I don't know about you guys, I've had a really interesting life. I'm 65 years old, and I have had stuff happen to me that I could probably make you cry over. There's some stories I couldn't share in this room on a Sunday. And yet, looking back on each incident, how I can choose to make that positive. What's the gift in what happened? Why did that happen? And what gift can I get from that? Do you remember, I th and I don't know what, it's not a proverb, but it's a saying or at least it's a story. Two little boys run into a barn and there is a huge, huge pile of poo. And one little boy is like, oh, 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 that is just terrible. And the other little boy dives in and he's just digging. And that his friend looks at me and says, what are you doing? And he said, with all that poo, there must be a pony. That's what we have to learn. With everything that happens in our life, there has to be a pony. Or we wouldn't be here. There is that statement, if God brought you to it, God will see you through it. And that God is within you. That's what we teach here. And so it's your choice. I'm not saying to be a Pollyanna. I'm not saying to like, dress up and pretend the world's not happening. The world's going to happen. It's what do you do with that information? Yes, you're going to grieve if you lose somebody close to you. And then after that, how do you celebrate the relationship or the life that the two of you shared? That's where the choice comes in. And so as we're deciding, okay, I'm going to be positive... So what would be the second step that would happen? 
How many of you have people in your life that are somewhat negative? Yeah. Or maybe a lot negative. Those are people that I would recommend you spend less time with. I'm not saying to cut them out of your life because they really need you. Because if you're the positive one, you could lift them up. What tends to happen when we hang around with negative people is instead of walking in and saying, isn't life grand? Things are going to be great. They say, oh, things are so sad. And we immediately go to, oh, I know, isn't it terrible? We need to lift each other up, especially now in this world of um, polarization, if you will. We need to lift each other up. And so if somebody starts to go to the negative, you can listen and then say something like, that's really interesting. That's not my experience. Have the courage to remain positive. Because I think what happens is we're afraid we're going to offend somebody because we're happy. When you ask Makasha, how are you doing today, Makasha? What do you say? Even when it's raining. And she's not fond of the rain, especially when it doesn't stop for months. And so it's a choice. She could let the rain get her down. She could wrap herself in a blanket in her home and say, oh, this is miserable. I hate the rain. Well... (laughs) You know, yes, I don't know that any of us embrace the rain a lot, and yet we choose to live in an area where, guess what? It rains. It rains. I'm always amazed when people live somewhere and they complain about where they live, and then you'll say, gee, have you ever thought about living here? Like, you know, I said to somebody in Santa Fe, she didn't like the cold winter. She didn't like that it was at 7,200 feet. She didn't like it was warm in the summer. And I, after my head quit spinning, I'm like, why don't you move? It's easy. I've done it. Go to San Diego. Oh, no, it's foggy in San Diego. And then I knew I was in trouble. Because there was going to be no place that was going to make her happy. Because happiness was out there. And if you're going to be positive, it starts with the God within. It starts from that place that knows no matter what's going on out here, you're connected to something far more powerful than the situations that happen in your life. And you lean in to that. You lean in to that. And you know, really, with negative people, you don't have to quit hanging around them, you'll drive them crazy and they'll either change into somebody positive or they'll probably find negative people to hang out with. Because that's how this works. Like attracts like. Remember, that's, you know, and and it's not simple necessarily. And yet, I could give you a lifetime of stories that tell you I've proven it in my life. I had to change. I had to take responsibility for my life. And when I did that, then guess what happened? You guys all changed. It was a miracle how quickly people around me started to change. Their faces changed also, by the way. And yet, my whole, uh, everybody that I associated with, sorry, um, changed, absolutely changed. Into, into people that believe that there's good in the world. That people actually believed that they're responsible on how they show up in any given situation. And so just to know that, to be that. And so then the third thing to do if you want to learn to be positive is look for positive things in every situation. So I could tell you that um, my mother came to live with me when she, when she was making her transition. And I could make that a really sad story. She was my mom. And yet, 
what I know and what I share with people, she got to live to be 86 years old. She got to be with me, her daughter, that we were like this most of her life and my life. We got to be together and heal that. She got to see her family come together under one roof. Those are the good things. Every situation in your life, there's a pony. You just have to dig through all the other stuff to find it. There are ponies in there. I look back at everything and go, oh yeah, that was awful. I was married to a man. He was awful. But you know what? He was a really good cook. It's the only good thing I can say. However, there's my gold nugget. He was a really good cook. I had the best bread pudding I'd ever had in my life. And it was made by him. There's a gold nugget. I'm not saying all your gold nuggets are going to be, oh, yeah, it changed me totally. Oh, yeah, I got a million dollars because I put up with that. It's the little changes that you have to find. And I got that from Edwin Gaines because Edwin Gaines talks about being eight months pregnant in Paris, thinking that she is married to the man of her dreams. This man writes her love letters. They're so happy. He goes out for a walk. She wants to take a nap. When he comes back, he walks in and looks at her and says, I don't love you. I've never loved you and I'm leaving you, and leaves her in Paris. So she started out a little bit angry. You'll have to read the book to see what she actually said about him. And yet she came to that place of forgiveness. And she came to that place of strength. And she found the gold nugget even in that. And so it's taking every opportunity that shows up in your life, every single opportunity, no matter what it looks like out in the humanness of our life, and looking for what's the good, what's the blessing. Because sometimes what we want to do is fall down on our knees and just scream, why me? And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes we get our best answers when we quit struggling, when we just say what? Use me. Use me. And so the fourth tool in being positive is to be nice to yourself. How many of you can tell me what's wrong with you? You're, you know, you've got a little too much muscle around the hips. You're not tall enough. You know, your hair is turning gray. You're balding. Do you all have those little things that you may not say out loud to people, but you certainly run in your head when you look in the mirror? Like what hap- I feel, just so you know, I feel like I'm 21. I really do. Ask anybody here that's my age. We feel like in our heads, we're still young and vibrant. And then we walk by the mirror and go, Whoo, who is that? Who is that and when did that happen? And you laugh now back there in the corner. But it'll happen to all of you. If You know, it's a blessing. It is a blessing to become older. It is a blessing to become older. And so instead of looking in the mirror and talking about our gray hairs or our baldness or, or the fact that our eyes don't see as well as they do, What a blessing to wake up and be able to come here to Genesis on a Sunday morning and share in this community. What a blessing that I'm still alive and I've got gray hair. I know you can't see the gray. That's okay. You never will. (laughs) Just trust me, it is. But, you know, if we could put down our own stick... Everybody's got a stick. Everybody's got something about themselves 
that they either have told other people or at least they're running the message in their head about what they don't like about themselves. Stop it. This thing that, you're, that you badger is the house of God. This is where your soul lives. This was given to you. It's a gift. Just as much as your next breath is a gift. So why would we badger a gift that's holding something so precious? Remember what Cynthia read this morning that Ernest Holmes said, your soul, your consciousness, always with you. Do you really want to go through eternity beating yourself up? If your consciousness is going with you, holy goodness, I need to clean up my house. So just remember, you chose to be here, I believe. And you were given this gift of this body. And so to love it with all its extra cushions or lack thereof, with all its full heads of hair or lack thereof, love yourself. Because remember, if you can't love yourself, why would you think you would be lovable? If this is a, if this is a philosophy that we teach is as we put out, so we receive. If I'm telling myself I'm not good enough, how would I ever convince any of you that I am? And so it's a practice. It's a practice. And yet to really love ourselves that fully. Think about how we could change the world if each one of us decided to do that. And then the fourth thing is to gift that to other people. I remember telling you probably a month ago, my, mo my uh, mother-in-law texts her grandchildren, because she's my stepmother-in-law, texts her grandchildren two or three times a week to tell them how fabulous they are. Can you imagine you're wonderful. You absolutely are the most precious thing God has ever created. Can you imagine receiving a text like that every single day? So share with other people how dear they are to your heart. How much you really love and appreciate the fact that they're in your life. We forget to tell people that. And because we can forget to tell people, as people, what do we do? We make up stories. And, and usually, if we go back to the beginning, they aren't really good stories. We need to let people know that they're important. That's one of the reasons I love this community. Is because we take time to be with each other, to really see each other, and to share and go deep with each other. I think most of you here now are in your second month of community first. And it's an honoring place to be, to sit in a circle with six or seven other people and really listen to each other and talk about what's going on in each other's lives and take prayer requests and just hold that space. And I know I haven't talked about community first, except kind of surfacely recently. And so if you're new here, or if you've been waiting for um, spots to grow up, please sign the waiting list. I put a new one out there, and um, just tell us what area you're willing to go to, because we do have some places that are opening up. And so just to know that that's another place to be seen, to be heard, and to shift from maybe being negative to positive. And it's amazing how these home group leaders are just lit up by this. And now they're talking about, gee, once a month isn't enough. What if we all went to a movie together? Or what if we went to Seahurst Park one day and hung out at the beach together? There's all kinds of things that Community First, these small groups, 
are, are there to ignite within us. The Lakewood group, none of them like to do yard work. I ask if I could be part of this group, I'll confess. They don't like to do yard work. So you know what they're going to do? As a group, they're going to go to each other's homes and clean up their yards. So they'll start at uh, Melody's house, clean up her yard, and then they'll move to another person's house, clean up their yard. And they're just going to do that as a group together. And I thought, wow, that would be fun. And this is coming from somebody you know I don't like yard work. And yet I thought, what a great idea. How do we connect more? How do we connect more deeply? How do we support each other? Because we're all going to have those moments where it's more a pile than a pony. And that's when it really is important to know that there's people there that absolutely understand and are going to hold you high. And so then finally, I guess I did all five. I guess there is no finally. Except that how many of you have read Ask and It Is Given? Do you remember the 68 seconds in the book? It's a practice. And I invite you to do this. So what Esther Hicks said was that 17 seconds, when you intend something for 17 seconds, it's really powerful. And as we know in all spiritual books, the number four is also very powerful. It's also the directions. It's our life path. So four is a very powerful number. So she took 17 times 4 equals 68. And I used to do this with a group of people. In fact, I even had, I turned over a Sunday and let people come up on stage and do it. And you stand up and you positively, and you set a timer, positively say, I declare right here and right now that I know Genesis is a thriving, growing community. The seats are filled. The music is vibrant. 68 seconds. I talk and then a buzzer goes off and everybody claps and says, and so it is. So your soul knows, oh yeah, more please. I like that. Stating it in the positive as it is happening right here, right now, because it is. It is. Time is our constraint. It's not the constraint of the divine. And so 68 seconds. Do it once a month. Do it once a week. Do it once a day. Shift your consciousness. 68 seconds. That's a minute and eight seconds. It's not that big of a deal. And it is powerful, I promise you. And so just knowing that, let's just take a moment to breathe that in. And so I wanted to let you know the five steps to being positive. Believe, know it's a choice. Being positive is a choice. Limit the negativity in your life. And be it, the, be it friends, family, or the news, limit it. Look for the positive in life. Even when there is a pile, there is a pony. Reinforce positivity in yourself and then do it for others. And watch your energy shift and then watch your life shift. And then watch the life of others shift around you that's what we teach here and so deep breath in and so just knowing right here and right now that there is that one life it's God's life it is good it is perfect it is my life it is your life right here and right now I speak my word for Gary I speak my word for Gary and his family knowing that Ellensburg is there awaiting them. That as they reintroduce themselves to family, to friends, to, their, to a spiritual community, to the university community, that all is received with open arms. That we bless him on his journey. That sometimes the hardest thing to do is to let go and, let we, and yet we let go with joy. We let go with knowing that this is the right thing and it produces so much joy, so much happiness, so much abundance in Gary's life that he's giddy. And when he comes back to Genesis 
as a visiting drummer, he shares with all of us how wonderful it is to follow your heart, to believe and to know that you're always working in that infinite field of possibilities. And God is always saying yes. So I just say thank you, Mother God Spirit, for allowing Gary this wonderful pony that he's riding off into the sunset with his family, knowing that he is received in Ellensburg with as much joy and love as we send him off with. So knowing this is the truth, I just say thank you, God. And so it is.